It's said that laughter is the best medicine. And for our first guest, that couldn't be more true. Yeah, when a life threatening illness caused her kidneys to fail, her hair to fall out, and feet to swell, she decided laughter was the best way to cope. Yes, her book, How Can You Not Laugh at a Time Like This? How Can You Not Laugh at a Time Like This? reminds all of us about the healing power of laughing. Welcome. Carla Ulbrich. Hi, Carla. How are you this morning? Great. Thanks. How Thank you? you for being here today. A sense of humor, I think, is critical. Even when you are facing illness, it really can help you get through. And for you, it was a great part in your healing. Uh, this weekend, you'll be the keynote speaker at the NC Lupus Foundation Summit in Charlotte. What is it that you hope audiences get out of your message? Well, what I hope the lupus audience and all audiences get is the importance of humor and being able to laugh at yourself and to take yourself lightly and your health seriously. Mm -hmm. I had that backwards for a long time. I took my health for granted and then would get really upset if anybody tried to make fun of me and it's life is so much easier doing it the other way around. That is so true. Yeah, you know, taking responsibility for my health and the choices you make every day. And I've decided that fun and laughter and friendship are not luxuries. Mm -hmm. They are necessities. I call them vitamin F, vitamin L. I think it's important to have those every day. Totally agree. And as part of your recovery, I see you got your guitar here. You wrote some songs. Uh, one of them is your experience of the frustrations with the healthcare system. Uh, this song is called Sitting in the Waiting Room. Yes, it's a reality song. Okay. okay. <laughs> Very good. All I right. used to bring my notebook to my doctor's appointments because I was just waiting so long. And uh, so this was very meta okay. about waiting in the room. I met the rheumatologist, nephrologist. I mean, all kinds, right? Yeah. <laughs> all kinds. I can just imagine your mind working as you're sitting there waiting. Uh, you've even found humor in some of the side effects of, of medications that you've had to take. That is true. Uh, they put me on prednisone, which a lot of people have to go on. Sure. In fact, my cat and I were on it at the same time. That causes you to puff up, doesn't it? It does, it? Yeah. yes. I gained 40 pounds in a month oh. on that. And um, they tell you, you know, it's important. You've got to save your kidneys. You've got to stop the disease process. But you don't have to like the side effects. <laughs> sure, of course not. <laughs> it's not no. required because it causes mood swings and, and insomnia, mm -hmm. which helped me with cleaning up my kitchen and my alphabetizing my CD collection. But <laughs> <laughs> prednisone will make you get real fat. Prednisone will give you cataracts. Prednisone it will destroy your bones. So take some prednisone, destroy your bones today. Prednisone, your moods are up and down. Prednisone, your face is big and round. Prednisone will mess with your hormones. So take some prednisone, spend your life alone today. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? How you doing today? Everything's good for you today? Though? Yes, I'm, I'm really well, thank you. And I have a newfound gratitude for being well after being so sick. At, at one point, I was so sick I had congestive heart failure, anemia, kidney failure, and my legs were so swollen I had to wear a compression hose, and my mm. feet were so swollen I had to wear slippers. That's all I could wear. Mm. Which is why and you're wearing slippers today. I, now I wear them as a fashion statement. Well, and it makes a statement, <laughs> Carla. It's bold. Because I'm it's the singing bold. patient, you know, I have to have to wear slippers. But uh, it gives me an excuse also to not wear high heels, although you look fabulous in them. <laughs> But I'd rather wear slippers. I'd rather wear slippers, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there was a point where I was very sick, and, and people, my friends, my family, we really weren't sure that I was going to live. And the worst part was being only 80 pounds. Now, my girlfriends had no sympathy for being too skinny. They didn't feel sorry for, for that. Everything else, losing the hair, you know, having to wear slippers, well, maybe not that so much, but the kidney failure, the congestive heart failure, they felt bad for that, but not for being too skinny. Uh. Everyone thinks that losing your butt is a good thing until it happens to you. I was just wondering, hypothetically, what would you do? Theoretically, if something should happen accidentally or medically, what if your butt was gone? Would you write Dear Abby for advice in a letter? Put a cushion in your chair to make it feel better. Try to fatten up with brie and cheddar. What if your butt was gone? Carla Elberg, you can keep on playing if you like. The book is called <laughs> How Can You Not Laugh at a Time Like This? How Can You Not Laugh at a Time Like This? Thank you very much, and I celebrate your sense of humor and your health. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Carla. Carla. All right, still ahead.